Okay, in the last video, we had derived this formula, which tells us how many permutations we can expect when we have a total of n number of objects, but not all of them are distinct. Some of the objects uh, might be of a certain kind, say n1, and we have various numbers of them. Same thing for n2, n3, and n sub k. So this is the formula that tells us then that if we have a collection of objects and they're not all distinct, this is how we can determine how many permutations we can expect with that uh, with those group of objects. For example, we were dealing with the word Mississippi. Where the I's are repeated four times, the S's are repeated four times, and the letters P's are repeated two times, and we determine that the number of factorials is equal to the total number of letters in the word, that's 11, divided by the number of times each letter is repeated. The I's are repeated four times. The S's are repeated four times, and the P's are repeated twice. So this formula here then tells us the number of permutations that we could generate with the word Mississippi. We have all these repeat letters contained in the word. The problem that we had left off in the last video was this one. Okay, so this tells us the total number of permutations that we could generate with the word Mississippi. It has all these repeats. We want to ask this question. How many of these permutations or how many of these different arrangements are, are arranged so that the, the two letters P's are always separate from each other? So here we know the total number of arrangements and these arrangements, how many of them have it so that the P's are never side by side. They're always separated. And Whenever you're faced with a question like that, it's usually easiest to answer the opposite question. And that is, okay, how many arrangements we're dealing with the letters P right now, so you can ask this question. How many arrangements have the P's side by side. So in other words, the P's are never separated. Now with that, okay, if we're looking at the, at the word Mississippi, you see that we have 11 letters total, but if the P's are never going to be separated, we consider them to be one object. So then, with this kind of scenario, the total number of letters that we have to permute is not 11, it's 10. And there are still four I's. There are still four S's. Now here we had two fat curl because there's two P's, but now the P's are considered as one object. So, we don't go any further down here in the denominator. So this expression right here tells us out of this total number of permutations, this number of them has the P's located right next to each other. The P's are not separated. So if we take the total number of arrangements and subtract this, that would give us the total number of arrangements when the P's are always separated. So let's see what we have. We have 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial. 2 factorial is just 2, so let's just write it as 2 times 2 minus 10 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial. And 
Here the denominators are almost the same. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by 2. So now these are the same. We can factor this out. And notice 11 factorial. That equals 11 times 10 factorial. We discussed this in previous videos, so hopefully that's pretty obvious to you. So let's see, we can write, rewrite this. We'll factor this out. Times 11 factorial, which is this. 11 times 10 factorial minus 2 times 10 factorial. And it looks like this expression here is going to be 11 minus 2 is 9. So this equals 9 times 10 factorial. So let's see what we have. We have this would be equal to, we have this, times 9. Now here we have 9 times 10 factorial. We have 9 times, a 10 factorial, we can write that as 10 times 9 factorial. So there's no confusion. You can write it like that. And let's see what we have. That's 2 goes into 10 5 times, not twice. So this is equal to 5 times 9 is 45. So we have 9 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial times 45. 5 times 9. Our 9 factorial is right here. So, let's see what this gives us. We should be able to figure that out without too much problem. Let's just make some room. We have 9 factorial, 45, times 9 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial. So here then, we've got 45, and 9 factorial, that's 9 times 8 times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4 factorial, divided by 4 factorial, times 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3, times 2, like this. So these cancel. 3 goes into 9, 3 times. 4 goes into 8, 2 times, and 2 goes into 6, 3 times. So our answer will equal 45 times 3 times 2 times 7 times 3 times 5. Like this. Uh, let's see, this is 21. Here we have 3 times 2 is 6 times 5 is 30. So this equals 45 times 21 times 30. And I think if we multiply the result, that comes out to 28,350. So, what we know then is 
For the word Mississippi, the original question was, how many ways can we arrange these letters so the order where the order matters, and we've got repeats in here, how many permutations can you generate? And the answer to that was 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial. That's the total number of arrangements possible. This number of arrangements always have it, so the two P's will never be next to each other. The two P's will always be separated from each other. Okay, um, that's it for that problem then. Um, there's another way that we can handle these permutations with repeats in them besides this general formula. To learn how to handle that though, we need to learn more about combinations and that's what we're going to do in the next video. So, come back, join us in the next video and we'll solve some more problems.